Welcome back to Project Cars from Automotive Tales. On today's episode, we are going to do some basic maintenance on the Fiat 850, and then aim to start the car after two years of slumber. What can possibly go wrong? So, first things first, before we do anything with this Fiat, we need to check that the engine is turning over. So, I put a socket on the alternator here. Let's just see if that rotates. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay, well, we've got rotation. Let's go all the way around, let's just see. Yeah, a bit of compression there. Doesn't feel too bad. No nasty knocking sounds, so there's no valve stuck. It was relatively free actually. Okay, well, that's the first test passed. Um, next thing is to look at fuel. So there's a fuel filter, I don't know if you can see, and then right down here there's a little plastic fuel filter and that looks like it's turned to varnish. So the first job is going to be to get that off um, and uh, see if we can replace that filter. So we've got ourselves some fuel filters, um, so we're going to put one on, see how it runs and whether it runs clean enough and a spare one to change if necessary. Some new fuel hose for the bit I pointed out. Uh, I also noticed that this larger fuel hose from the fuel pump, um, as I start to manipulate it, is really badly perished actually. Um, so I'm going to have to replace that. Unfortunately, I don't have any of that in stock. I've only got uh, the braided equivalent. Um, so for now, it's going to have that on it, which is a bit overkill, but um, is suitable for the job. Um, so let's start taking it all apart, get this filter on, and then we can try and, and start it. hoses off the car. As you can see, this was the hose that goes from the pump to the carburetor. That is very, very perished. So I'm glad we spotted that and get that off because that's a massive fire risk. Uh, this is the other lower hose that I pointed out before. Unfortunately, it put a bit of a fight. I ended up having to cut it off. Um, so I've got them in on the bench, uh, mainly so I can measure them up, make sure I get the same length of hose to go back in so nothing's too tight or too loose. Uh, and we can fit the new filter in, in line with this piece and then get it in the car as a one -er. So this is the quarter inch, I think this is a three eighths hose, as so this is the one that's going to be braided only because that's what I've got in stock at the moment. Interestingly, as I, uh, as I took the filter out, I was able to catch some of the fuel. So this is what was in there. This is very horrible, yellowy, varnishy type fuel. So there's no way that would have done the carburetor any good. So I'm glad we've done this before we try to start the car. So now time to cut all the hoses and then get it back onto the fuel system. Hoses are done, uh, out with the old, in with the new. I think they look all right in the end. The uh, rubber ends on the uh, braided hose was a bit fiddly, but we got there in the end. So time to go back to the car and uh, wiggle these into place. <laughs> Well, 
The more astute among you will have spotted that that isn't a braided hose going in from the fuel pump to the carburetor. It was indeed a 5 16th, not a 3 8th. So I had to run out to the part shop and get some new hose. Okay, so we've got the fuel line back on. Uh, I've taken the air cleaner off just to let it breathe a little bit so we can see what's going on with the carburetor. Um, new fill filter is on down there. So now the all important moment. I have added a little bit of oil just to top the level up. We are gonna change the oil once we've got the car running, um, but I think we're pretty much ready to go. So, the battery's charged. Um, although after two, three years of sitting, it still had charge in it. Uh, all right, here goes. Oh, this is very tight in here for a larger person like me. So ignition stage one, like pump on the throttle, choke is already on, it goes. Spinning over it. Okay, don't burn the starter out. Okay, full choke on. Ready. It's interesting, it doesn't actually look like we've got any fuel in it. That's probably worth checking. Okay, one last go. Okay, so we're not starting this time. Interestingly, it's not registering any fuel at all. Now, I'm sure there was a little bit left in the car. So next job is to go and get some fuel, uh, put the battery back on charge, and then we'll have another go. Okay, we have added a few litres of fresh fuel, and we have actually changed a battery terminal, which I'll show you in a second, because that didn't look particularly good. So let's see. If this will start, so choke is still on, still out of gear. But I just sound very happy about that. As you can see, the battery lives here under the frunk. Uh, next to a slightly crusty looking brake master. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, so I've added the new positive terminal here. I was gonna change the negative terminal because it doesn't really grip very well, uh, but it is actually the original, I think, because it's actually cast onto the wire. So this lead is cast over the end of that wire. I haven't been able to free it up from where it mounts to the body, which is down there, one of the bolts in the master cylinder. So for now, I've left the earth on. Uh, until I can find a decent length of earth cable and probably make a new earth all, all together with a new terminal. But the positive has gone on all right, so that's now secure where the old one wasn't secure. The, the thread was so worn it wasn't really clamping on very well at all. So we have had a failed start attempt again, so I'm going to put the battery back on charge for a little bit, make sure it's nice and topped up, uh, and then uh, I'm going to go and check for some spark. Well, as you'll have probably seen, we don't have any spark. So time to investigate what might be causing the problem. So as you can see, I've got the positive terminal on the coil uh, hooked up to my multimeter. I'm looking for continuity. Um, so first of all, on the primary side. So we have got continuity there. Reading about eight ohms, which is a bit high. I think the coil is dead. So that's why we're not getting a spark, I suspect. So that kind of uh, is game over for today. I'm gonna to have to go and source a new coil uh, and see then if we can get a spark out of it. Slightly irritating. Um, so I'm being very careful to pour this as cleanly as possible. One, to not make a mess of the engine, but also because 
oddly this engine doesn't have an oil filter it just has a gauze which is i'm not making a very good job of this i've made it a mess oh my god what the f that did absolutely not go as planned bollocks